In the second half of the week, the military situation in Syria's western Aleppo escalated. On April the 22nd, Turkish forces shelled positions of the Syrian army in western Aleppo. Pro-Turkish sources claimed that this shelling was a response to Syrian army strikes on positions of Hayat Tahrir al-Sham and other al-Qaeda-linked groups near the villages of Kafra Amma, al-Qasir, Kafra Tal and Kafra Nuran. Pro-government sources described these strikes, however, as a defensive measure to counter regular ceasefire violations by Turkish-backed militants. On April the 23rd, the Syrian army reinforced its positions east of Atrayib by deploying additional troops and equipment there. If Turkish forces and Idlib militants continue attacks on Syrian army positions in western Aleppo, open military hostilities could resume in the area. Hayat Tari al-Sham executed a 19-year-old Syrian refugee deported from Turkey to Greater Idlib. Mohammed Akib Hamantanu was killed on April the 20th after militants found that SMS messages in his phone contained criticism of Hayat Tari al-Sham leader Abu Mohammed al-Julani. Hayat Tari al-Sham remains the most powerful group in Greater Idlib and controls most of the militant-held area in the region, including Idlib city, the border with Turkey, and key positions on the contact line with the Syrian army. The Turkish leadership, in fact, provides direct support to the terrorist group by turning a blind eye to its crimes and protecting it from the Syrian army. More details appeared about the recent Israeli strike on Syria. According to fresh data, the Israeli strikes targeted a command center of Hezbollah near the town of al suhna a training camp of the Iranian-backed Afghan Fatah Mayun Brigade in the al tulila Reserve near Palmyra, and a base of the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps within the Palmyra Air Base. Despite this, the only confirmed casualties resulting from the strike were three Syrian service members. Pro-government locals intercepted another U.S. military convoy in the province of al hasaka on April the 22nd, locals stopped the U.S. convoy near the town of Fafara, stoned it and forced U.S. troops to retreat. The incident happened near a Syrian army checkpoint. The Asayish security unit of the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces commented on the recent clashes with the pro-government National Defense Forces NDF in al kamishli city. The Kurdish force accused pro-government fighters of destabilizing the situation and threatened them with military action. In their turn, pro-NDF sources claim that the tensions in the city result from the violent behavior of Versailles personnel who are putting pressure on and discriminating against Arab locals on ethnic grounds. On April the 22nd, US President Donald Trump said that he had given orders to attack and destroy any fast attack craft of the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC Navy, that harass US warships. Encounters between the IRGC Navy and U.S. warships erupt in the Persian Gulf on a regular basis. All these confrontations have a similar pattern. The U.S. leadership sends warships, including aircraft carriers, to the Persian Gulf, describing this as a show of force and a strong message to Iran. IRGC fast attack craft deploy to track and monitor the U.S. warships, as well as to prevent any attempts to enter Iranian waters. In response, the U.S. accuses Iran of aggressive actions and provocations. The most recent incident of this kind happened on April the 15th, when 11 IRGC Navy fast boats tracked six U.S. warships, the USS Louis B. Puller, the USS Paul Hamilton, the USS Firebolt, the USS Sirocco, the US CGC Rangel, and US CGC Maui. Any U.S. Navy attempts to attack IRGC Navy fast attack craft operating in Iranian or international waters in the Persian Gulf would immediately lead to a new round of military escalation in the region. Just recently, the Iranian military deployed additional coastal defense missile systems near the Strait of Hormuz.